and our gathering songs. church welcome to worship it's great to have you all with us this morning and those join us online welcome uh, wonderful to have you here um, just a, a quick announcement that uh, during the service today we'll be welcoming some new members we welcome some at the first service and we're gonna welcome a few more um, so when I, I'll read off all the names of those that we've already welcomed that we're going to welcome and if you hear your name, come on up, and if you aren't a new member and you want to be a new member, well, just come on up, I guess. All right? Well, I invite you to stand as you are able as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship this morning. 
and let us confess our sins before God and one another. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Well, beloved of God, you are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven, and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no chosen me together. Holy God, our righteous judge, 
Daily, your mercy surprises us with everlasting forgiveness. Strengthen our hope in you and grant that all the peoples of the earth may find their glory in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We will continue as we dwell in God's word. morning. Today the gospel is according to Luke, the 18th chapter. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector standing far off would not even look up to heaven but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other, for all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Well, I invite any of our kids to come on down for the children's message. Hunker down. I'm going to sneak right in the middle here, guys. Hey, oh. Better make room. I don't, you think I can fit there? I'll try. Whew. Thick and thin. Oh, hey there. Hey. Hey, guys. Can I get one? Can I get one? I am really good at high fives. The best at high I'm That was a good high five for me, but mine was the best. Rowan, do I get a high five? Yeah, I'm still the best at giving high fives. You guys want the best high five ever? There it is. Yep, still the best. I am still the best. Ellie, you already know this, but I'm the best. And the best, yes. <laughs> right? I'm the best at giving high fives. You know what else? I'm the best at everything I do. Do you know that? Do you know that, Izzy? Is your cron yeah, you sit right there. Did you know that, Ron? I'm the, yeah, you did? I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm the best, do you think so? Yeah? All right, children's sermon over. <laughs> so, yeah. I've lost my mic here for a second, sorry. Um, in reality, am I really the best? Probably not. What was I doing, you know? So in our story, we heard this, this sentence, this phrase that said something about being humbled. Those that are humbled will be exalted, and those that are, um, are try to exalt themselves will be humbled. What I was just doing by saying, I'm the best. I'm the best at everything. Nobody's better. I'm the best. I wasn't being, being very humble, was I? I was being kind of self-righteous, trying to lift myself up. Well, that's what happened in the story. This Pharisee, this guy, he, he did a lot of good things because his faith told him to, called him to do that. But then he said, I'm, I'm this way because of me. I'm, I am the best at doing this. I am the greatest. And instead of pointing towards God, he pointed towards himself. And so what that tells us is that God calls us to be kind and to serve others and to love others and to forgive others. But God also wants that, us to do that so that we point others toward God, so that we tell others that we do these things because we love God, not because we're so amazing, but because God is amazing, okay? Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for loving us, and thank you for uh, reminding us and teaching us to, to be humble, humble in our lives, in the ways in which we uh, serve others, and are kind to others, and love others. 
We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody, thanks for coming up. You can head back to your seats. Oh, there we go. <laughs> My oldest daughter just walked by me and said, you're special. <laughs> Thank you, I am. Well, there was a young woman, woman uh, who asked to meet with her, uh, her pastor and to talk, about, to talk with him about um, something that was, uh, was really she was struggling with. It, she said there was this sin and, and she didn't know how to deal with it. and she couldn't, it, was, uh, it was affecting her life and it was something she couldn't control. She, goes, uh, she, she finally meets with the pastor and says, Pastor, every time I'm in church, every time I'm sitting here, I, I look around and I can't help but notice that I am the most beautiful person here. Uh, nobody is prettier than I am. And I, I, I just can't help but know that. I, I'm the prettiest one in the whole congregation. What can I do about this sin? The pastor thought for a moment and then replied, Well, Mary, that's not sin. That's just a mistake. We're always comparing ourselves to others, though, aren't we? Seeing how we measure up to those around us. Uh, we, we compare ourselves, we measure ourselves up with those uh, around us we, we, about whether how they dress or, or how they look or, or what they drive or the house they have or who they hang out with or, or what they do in their free time. We're always comparing ourselves to others. Did you ever hear the, the story about the clever salesman who uh, he closed hundreds and hundreds of sales with this line. Let me show you something that several of your neighbors said that you couldn't afford. We're always comparing ourselves. And it seems more than not that we usually we do this to make ourselves feel better, to prop ourselves up. Well, at least, I'd, at least I'm not like that person. Or at least I'm not like that person. Yet the minute we start to compare ourselves... Uh, to one another or, or start judging on, on who, is, who is better or, or who is worse, we fall into this trap that we find Jesus telling us about in our story, in our reading for today. Now believe it or not, regardless of what you've been taught or what you've, what you've read or come to believe, a Pharisee at the time really wasn't a bad person. In fact, they were probably a good person. They were someone that really did everything that their faith called them to do. They did everything right in the sense of society at that time. They followed the law. They followed the, what, what their faith called them to. And then the tax collector and the other part of this, the other character in the story would take advantage of the system. He would take advantage for every cent he could get. He, in fact, they, there were stories of, rich, uh, of tax collectors claiming their rich friends' weddings on their, on their tax expenses. They were powerful. They had connections. They were slimy. So when Jesus begins to tell this parable, he, he's, he's telling it to a group of people that are primarily religious leaders. And so for them, they're thinking, oh, well, I, it's pretty obvious. The Pharisee is going to be the, the good person and the tax collector is going to be a bad person in this story. They expect that the Pharisee is going to be the one that gets to go back to his house justified. And the tax collector will be not be right by God. Yet, we read it that that's the exact opposite of what actually happens. It comes back to this, again, this idea of comparing. And a little bit of assuming, of making assumptions. I like how Bill Loader, who he writes that, we describe this feeling, this idea of, as self-righteousness. We've all heard that, right? Self-righteousness. I like how he describes it. He says that uh, self-righteousness almost, uh, it, it follows a common tendency to define oneself by defining others. Instead of grappling with our own identity or, or looking at ourselves, we, we focus on what makes us better, what makes us better than others. Such a stance means that to respect ourselves, we need to 
to beat others, run them down. It's a game people play, shoring up group identity by joining in a chorus of condemnation of others. Aren't they awful? It's kind of a, a fellowship of disparagement which gives those who indulge in it a sense of closeness, standing together against a, a common enemy. It is common at wartime or times of crisis. It's also common in daily life. It's the joy of gossip. I felt really convicted by that one, specifically the part where he, he talks about the group joining up an identity in, a, in a, a fellowship of disparagement. We've all been there, right? We've all done that, talking about someone else, and back and forth it's easy to feed off one another. We've all done it. Because if we're honest, there are a lot of people in this world that, that we tend to judge, even if we don't want to admit it or, 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 or say that out loud. It, there are people that we have labeled bad people. or It's just a reality. Or, or people that are the very opposite of us, opposite sides of, of, of the political sphere, opposite sides of, of our social life, even opposite sides religiously. And when we think of them, or even after we've come from a discussion or a conversation with them, we often think, don't we, thank God I have it more right than they do. We've all thought that. Thank God I have it more right than they do. I know I have. Yet this is the very trap that the Pharisee fell into. Thinking it's all about us. Us being right. Us doing the work. What we've done to make ourselves so amazing. What we've done in following what God has called us to. Not that God has called us to it, but that we've done it. So we start to pat ourselves on the back. We, we tell the whole world of all the amazing things that we do. How amazing we are. We fall into the trap. Caroline Lewis, who's the preaching professor, or one of the preaching professors at Luther Seminary, says that faith doesn't work that way, though. As soon as we start to question whether or not someone deserves a place in the kingdom, we would do well to remember this passage. As soon as someone points out the inadequacy of others, we would do well to remember this passage. As soon as the justification of another is easily determined, it is time to reread this passage. What will our response be? What will our response be? I love this reminder that I came across. It's a saying, and I have no idea where it came from, I'll be honest with you, but I've heard it a couple different times over the years. God wisely designed the human body so that we could neither pat our own backs nor kick ourselves too easily. Let me read that again. God, God wisely designed the human body so that we can neither pat our own backs nor kick ourselves too easily. You can do it. Kind of. It's not easy, though. I don't think I'd kick myself. Brothers and sisters, here's the thing. We need to realize that our God isn't about this idea of who is better or who is smarter than or prettier than or richer than or holier than them. God doesn't discriminate. God, God does not compare us to one another. God does not measure his love for us against each other. Despite the fact that we might want that to be that way. That if we do just more than another person, we should have more love. That's not how it works. So if we find ourselves caught up in this trap like the Pharisees kind of find themselves in, may we remind ourselves, may we remind each other of the love that God has for us all, the mercy that God has for all, the grace that God has for all. May we be reminded like the Pharisee needed to be reminded. It's not about us. 
It's about God. It's not about us. It's about God. It's not about us. It's about God. It's about God. Thanks be to God. Amen. invite you to stand as you are able. Spoke a word, you were singing over me. You've been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You've been so, so
Well, at this time, I'm going to read the names of all of uh, those new members, and I'll let you guys can come on down. The first service, I know, uh, but there was a few that were already here, so if you don't see them, come down. But Bill and Elaine Johnson, Travis and Jean Ide, Bob and Lori Hackle, Ray and Karen Larson, Alan and Crystal Nutt, uh, Matthew and Ivy Ouellette, and Alice, you guys can come on down, Derek and Carrie Patnode, Adam and Katie Bonhues, um, Dale and Linda Caldwell, Derek and Tina Burgraff, Paul and Gwen Erdahl, Rita Porter, and the brand man, Ran Helberg, who I said Brian the first service. Brian. You guys can face up here. Come on on down. So there'll be a, a couple things you have to say, which is, I'll tell you. You're going to say, I will, and I ask God to help and guide me, and I will prompt you, and I'll remind you, okay? So, will you show up with this community for worship, study, prayer, and service to others? I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you practice being curious about Scripture, your neighbor, and God's ongoing creation in daily life? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you share your sense of call and unique talents with a spirit of generosity in the life of this congregation? I will, and I ask God to help me. Let's pray. Gathering God, you knit your people together in the body of Christ and form congregations to do your good work. Be present in our feasting and praying and our worship and service so that this community reflects your abundance and desire for the church on earth today and always. Amen. We give thanks for the unique stories and, and the talents you bring to this community. The church is a living organism, and your commitment adds value and energy to who we are as a congregation. So we promise, all of us, we promise to, to welcome your faith as it flows through life's joys and challenges. We desire for this church to be a safe place where you can show up as your true self and be received with love and grace. We also acknowledge that we'll fail you. We will. This congregation will both embrace and resist change. Sometimes we will disagree and make mistakes. So we ask that on this side of that disappointment, your promise to stick around for the healing that surely comes. Because if you go before the listening and the mending, you will miss the holy thing about being the church. The dying and the rising. The forgiving and the living. So, do you desire to become members of this congregation investing in the future of the shared mission and ministry? We do. All right. Well, we welcome you as members of this congregation inspired and invested in the ministry we all share. You are beloved, and your presence here is a gift. May God bless you these, bless these new relationships, and our common call is God's mercy and abundance the world needs. Amen. Let's welcome. Let's welcome them. If you guys want to turn and face the congregation, welcome each and every one of you. After the service, be sure to introduce yourselves and to all, all you out there, be sure to introduce yourselves here. We're not making you guys do that. that that'd be a lot. So introduce and, and get to know people. All right. You guys can head back to your seats, but welcome. In gratitude and humility... Let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. God of mercy, you are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name. Inspire your church to serve and love all people with the unceasing grace you extend to us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all creation, 
You formed a world where even the sparrow finds a home. Preserve the beauty and diversity of all creatures with whom we share the earth. Lead us to protect all living things. Lord, in your mercy. God of peace, you are an ever-present help in time of trouble. Rescue families and nations torn apart by violence and warfare. Unite all people toward common goals to avert reconciliation and peace for every person. Lord, in your mercy. God of hope, you stand with the suffering and give strength. Comfort your people filled with fear or anger, anxiety or shame. Bring healing to all who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, especially Vernette Heidenreich, Gary Geisinger, Clayton Disgrude, Chuck and Arlene Sands, Bev Orson, Cash Purcell, Loretta Hogan, Jeff Henry, Kathy Trutna, Sally Mozingo, Mozingo, Cheryl and Daniels, and all those we name silently before you. Lord, in your mercy. God of restoration, we call us to trust in you and not ourselves alone. Make this congregation a community of humility and repentance, ready to encounter you in love and follow in your ways. Lord, in your mercy. God of eternal life, to you be glory forever. We give you thanks for all who have fought the good fight, finished the race, kept the faith, and now live with you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's take a moment and share that peace with one another. You may be seated and we continue with the receiving of our offering. Um, a reminder that the Joyful Jar is up front and the mission of the month that the Joyful Jar supports is the ELCA's disaster relief that all of those funds will be going to families uh, and people that have been affected and have lost so much because of the hurricane in Florida. Um, and know that uh, those gifts are so important to those people. So uh, we continue with our offering.
We pray together. Gracious God, in your great love, Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all the drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. And know that today we, will be, uh, have, we have two stations. Your ushers will direct you forward. Uh, as you come forward, you can grab an empty cup if you prefer the wine. Or you can grab the uh, 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 pre-filled cups that have the alcohol-free grape juice in them. Um, then move to receive the bread, and if you prefer uh, the uh, gluten-free, just place your index finger up in front of you like this, and your server will extend the plate, and you can grab that gluten-free wafer that's in the middle of that plate. Then move to receive the wine or the blessing for the grape juice, and then as you return to your seats, place the empty cup in the basket in the middle aisle. Uh, know that there are elements in the back of the sanctuary if you prefer not to come forward for whatever reason, and know that if you uh, take one of those, uh, hear these words, the body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. And finally, we say it every week because it's true. This is the Lord's table, and the Lord tells us that all are welcome. So, all are welcome. It's a pretty awesome thing. It's a pretty special thing. Not, there's not many places where you can come with no judgment, no prerequisites. You just get to come. So Come. For all is ready.
glory. together. God of abundance, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, just a few announcements this morning. Again, welcome to all those that are guests with us and those online. And of course, we a special welcome and uh, celebration with our new members. We are so glad uh, that you've joined. Um, a couple reminders about our service coming up uh, next Sunday at 10.30 will be our confirmation service, affirmation of baptism service for our 10th graders. Um, so hopefully you'll all be here. Um, it's going to be a great service. Probably be a packed house, which is going to be wonderful. So join us again next Sunday the 30th, uh, 10.30 for that. Next, uh, this coming Wednesday, there will not be any regular D-Way or worship or uh, the meal uh, because we have our confirmation and banquet night uh, that includes the reading of the faith statements for the 10th graders. All regular Wednesday night ministries will resume again on November 2nd, that's Wednesday, November 2nd. All 7th through 12th graders, uh, the signups are on the board right now for the Boundary Waters trip. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it uh, closes uh, on October 26th, so check out the sign-up boards out, out there, again, all 7th through 12th graders. Next Saturday, October 29th at 9 a.m., we will have a First Communion class in the Fellowship Hall. Um, join, come join us and sign up online, or you can call the church office. Know that um, it's up to the parents what, what age you bring your child for, for First Communion. Um, if you are curious if it's the right time, you can certainly come talk with me. Um, know that our middle child came at a fourth, four-year-old, five-year-old, something like that. So just for something to think about. Um, and then finally, 
Tuesday mornings, if you're available and you're around, Tuesday mornings at 8 a.m. is the men's Bible study. All are welcome for that. And then at 10 a.m. is the women's Bible study. So we encourage you to come join us for that if you're able. And then finally, uh, we give thanks for all that have signed up for the many different areas that um, volunteers are needed. Uh, we give thanks to Kristen Condon, who is our volunteer coordinator. She's done a great job, a phenomenal job of getting people signed up. Um, but we're always looking for more. So look out at the board at the many ways that maybe you feel God calling you to serve in different and unique ways. With that, I invite you to stand as you are able and receive the blessing. May the God of steadfast love and grace fill you with joy, strengthen you in love, and send you forward in faith. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. We invite the kids to come on down and grab an instrument and play with the band. to all. Together we live and share the love of Jesus. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.